So, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hello everyone, and I hope you had a good lunch. Was it good? Yes, no? Let's warm up a little bit. Okay, it was, it was good. So, welcome to this talk, uh, a four-year retrospective, uh, lessons learned from building a video player from scratch with React Native. What are we going to see today? Well, we have to start with a question that is, what is a retrospective? Well, when I was looking at a, for a definition of a retrospective, I came across this quote, which is a show of the work that an artist has done in his life so far. So trust me, I am the farthest thing from being an artist. I'm not the artist. But I think that we, if we treat programming as an art of logic creativity, uh, it, I think that this definition fits well. But let, let's move on to a more concrete definition. Practically, what is a retrospective? Well, a retrospective is a chance of a team to look back and to reflect on the past work in a structured meeting. And what do I mean by that? The goal of this talk is uh, to reflect and to see the past things that we have done in Learn on this particular project, look back, take the good things that we have seen, take the bad things that we have, uh, came, uh, came, that we have to face, and hopefully, hopefully uh, state some lessons learned and my goal is to give you uh, some um, some of the experiences that we had in order to prevent some errors that we did in the past hopefully to save you some time if you manage to develop uh, a react native app uh, with um, with a video which has a video functionality so what are we going to see today? We do a brief check-in so every good retrospective begins with a check-in we'll get to know each other better then we'll move on to a project overview so we can align everyone on the topic. We will see with what is learned and what is the project we are talking about. Then we will take a look at the good things that we, uh, we had. So what went well? Then we see the most interesting part, in my opinion, which is what uh, didn't go well. After that, we'll state some lesson learned and every good retrospective ends with action items. So concrete things that we can do to improve our work and to improve uh, the project. So. Let's do a quick check-in. And what a better way to do a check-in than presenting myself. So I am Omar Job and I am technical lead at Learn, which is an Italian startup that has been around since 2020. I'm a software engineer and have a strong passion for products. So I've always been building products and I love this, uh, this, kind, of, uh, um, uh, this kind of topic in the development, in development industry. In my free time, I have a lot of passions such as motorcycling and I'm, I am a watch enthusiast. So if we have some common topics, hit me up later, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. But what about you? I want to know you better and I want to ask you some questions. And I will start with this question. Do you use React Native? How many of you do you do use React Native or have ever used React Native? Okay, quite a few. Do you ever use it in production? Okay, less, I think. Perfect. And last question. Do you know Learn? How many of you do know Learn, the platform? Okay, quite a few. Perfect. And I wanted to align everybody on the topic, so I'm going to show you what is Learn and what are we talking about today and what is the project. So, Learn is a startup that has 1,500,000 users and it's been around since, since, like, since 2020. And we launched it in the in June 2020, and it's almost four years that we are uh, we are live. Uh, we have uh, more than 300 courses because this is a, plat uh, cor a platform that sells courses, which are subscription, which is a monthly subscription. It means that uh, you pay a monthly fee to access all the content, like Netflix, for instance, in which instead of the TV series or the film, you have uh, marketing courses, uh, digital marketing, uh, Instagram courses even some tech course, but we are not covering this topic uh, right now, but you can find that also a lot of product courses, product development courses, and even soft skills. So it allows you continue uh, to um, continue learn new, th new things and get better in uh, a lot of disciplines. And it has, it has a freemium model, which is means that you can register for free, but if you want to watch all the content, you have to pay the uh, subscription. But the platform, the global platform, is not the topic of today. The topic of today is the player. So we have uh, an application which is made with React Native, as I said in the title, 
and we managed to develop a custom uh, player uh, of the, uh, of, with React Native. The first version released in 2020 was very basic. We had a little functionalities. If you can see in, the, in, the, in this picture, you cannot even use your finger to scroll the timeline on the, on the video. So it was very basic, but we started like that because we we're only two people developing the application and we wanted to be lean and develop something that was pretty usable, but not so complex. Then the application uh, evolved. We added a lot of functionalities to the player. We have a lot of uh, um, functionalities like transcripts. You can even take notes and you see there's a lot of things going on here. And the application is uh, fully custom. So it means that we did develop the application with a module, which is React Native uh, Video, the most uh, the most famous one uh, module of to develop uh, uh, video products on React Native. Uh, all the controls uh, are custom, so it means that we are not using the system ones of, of iOS or, or Android, but because we wanted more control on the things and we wanted to gain more observability over the over what's happening on the controls. And we developed even the bottom sheet with a module. That's the other module that we are, we, that we are using, which is a React Native uh, bottom sheet that allows the user to to show uh, a bottom sheet, as the name says, uh, in which you can insert every content that you want. For instance, the notes are in uh, notes are in the bottom sheet, uh, transcripts are in the bottom sheet, and even feedbacks. So this is a quick overview on the player that has a lot of uh, uh, functionalities. But let's move on. Let's move on and see what went well during these four years development process that has faced a lot of challenges. Well, what went well was obviously uh, the streaming part because. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, the core functionality of the application. So uh, streaming went very well, and I will expl I'll explain it, it later to you in a better way. Then we will move on to see the subtitles and transcripts part, because I'm very proud of what we did on that part uh, at the time. And later, last, the iOS performances. We are proud of our iOS uh, performances. So let's talk a little bit about streaming. I have already did some talks about streaming, so I won't deep dive in this topic because it's very complex and can be uh, very tricky to explain in a few minutes. But we built a custom infrastructure based on AWS that allows us to encode, encrypt the videos, and serve it through a CDN. And as I said, if you want to know more about this topic, hit me up later, or I, I can show you even the other talk that I did about this topic. But uh, the, the thing that is, that's important to know in React Native related to streaming is that this module supports natively uh, a lot of formats because, as you can see here, these URLs are all URLs coming from AWS. And as you can see here, a, there are a lot of formats, a lot of different video formats. And React Native Video supports all of them. So you can pass as a source the, the URL and it's ready to go. So even on MP3 or can be even a playlist on HLS streaming. So this worked very well because the streaming was adaptive. That it means that if the connection is not good on the device, it downscales the resolution to support the, the video playback. So this went uh, uh, very well in my opinion. Then there's the parts related to um, subtitles and transcripts. At the time we developed uh, uh, subtitles with uh, React Native Video, there was only this prop uh, related to subtitles. So you had to provide the subtitles to the application and stop. You did not have any options to style the subtitles. You did not have any option to position the subtitle. So you have to adapt to what was offered by the native module of the, of the system. But we wanted more control over this thing because we wanted to style the text, for instance, the, the font weight or the position of the subtitles. And even in full screen, we wanted to move them up or down as the user um, was looking at the, at the video in, in order to not cover the face of the professional that was speaking. So what we did uh, is to, uh, we've built a parser of the subtitles. As you can see on the left, uh, there's a, the format of the subtitles. So if you encode a video and you transcribe it, uh, the subtitles are like this. A text file containing for each sentence the time in which it has been said. So for instance, in the first part, ciao e benvenuti is uh, from minute zero to minute zero dot to the third second. So, in every section, you can find uh, the time that it has been pronounced by the, the person that's speaking. So we did parse this, th this thing into uh, an object, which is this type, in, in which you have uh, the ID, the start time, the end time, and the content, so the, the value of the, the text that has, is being pronounced by the, the person. And after that, 
we built a custom hook used to uh, render the subtitles. This is only for rendering purposes. So in this hook, you can see here, you pass the subtitle as an array of uh, type VTT, the type that we've seen uh, earlier. Then you pass player proxy. Player proxy is only the state of the player. So you know instantly if the player is playing, in which second is the player located. So based on that, you can search inside the subtitles. As you can see here, set block by time is emitted, used to uh, retrieve the current block being pronounced by the, the professional that is speaking. So for instance, if the minute is 3.32, you go and look in the source files on, of the subtitles, which sentence is being said. And this method, the get current queue, performs a binary search on the items in the, in the array. But you can use whatever you want to search and to look for this kind of uh, transcript. But what's important is what uh, the exposed attribute is. So current block. Uh, current block is a state variable that's used to uh, expose the VTT, so the object uh, that I've talked about earlier. So every time you get the text. For instance, here, this is a reference implementation in which you call the use subtitles hook, you pass the subtitles, and you pass the prayer proxy. So you can render the text uh, um, uh, with a simple hook that can be used everywhere. So here we use it in, an, uh, in a view, in a custom view that we built, but you can even use it on, uh, you will use the same hook even in React, in the, mobile, in the web application, with a draggable component that allows us to drag the, the text everywhere we want. So this is pretty useful. useful. And so here you can display the subtitles um, in the way you want there. They're not so different from that was present before, but at least we moved down the subtitles, but you can even change completely the style based on your preferences. And then there's the iOS performance part. Uh, in this part, uh, iOS uh, has played a big role in our application because as you can see here, uh, there is a, a low percentage of session with crashes. So it means that we get uh, a low amount of crashes, but you don't measure the stability of the app or the, form, the performance of the app only on the crashes. But you can see here that crashes and um, some kind of errors that does not, do not appear on iOS. It's pretty stable. And even, for instance, video smoothness, uh, the animations, and the audio background features. Uh, audio background means when you lock your phone, the playback continues. So you can listen, you can, for instance, go for a run, put your phone in the pocket, and go play and listen the, the video or the audio. So this works very well in iOS. It's pretty stable, even in terms of performances and frame rate, is pretty high. And so we are very proud of uh, these, um, these achievements because, uh, um, as you can see, uh, React Native, it's meant to run even uh, both on iOS and Android, but you never know what's the output if you're working with some native stuff. So on iOS, it works very, very well. But let's move to the other part. So I think that this is the most interesting part because it will leave you some kind of errors that we made, some mistakes, and hopefully it will save you some time. So this picture is pretty much self-explanatory. There's this guilty girl that's looking at our player. Can someone guess the name of this girl? Any guesses? Well, I'll tell you, this is Android. Meet Android, our new friend. Well, <laughs> this girl was pretty bad with us because uh, we had some troubles with the Android part. On iOS, it was very beautiful rainbow, sun. Here, there's the fire. So it means that we have some problems. But what didn't go well on Android? Well, the player itself, the core player itself, didn't work well. And I explain it later. The audio background feature had some problems on some devices. And we had a lot of different behaviors between iOS and Android. So what about the player? React Native Video is only a wrapper around the APIs of the system. On Android, you have two kinds of players, one of which is Media Player. Media Player API is a common API used to, uh, to handle the, play the playback of the video, but it's very basic, it's very old. And React Native Video did for default uses this kind of API. Then there's Exo Player which is another player that's most commonly used. Yeah, now it, uh, it is at version 3. Uh, React Native Video 5.2 that we're, we're using uses the version 2. But this player handles very well the content. It supports a lot of uh, uh, streaming protocols, the majority of them. 
and it works, it's flawless, it works very, very well with uh, almost all the devices. So this is the go-to. But the problem we had with this kind of implementation is that in 2020, our first version was using media player because uh, React Native Video for the default player of React Native Video was media player. So it was using that API. So we had a lot of uh, feedbacks from our users. We are, for, we are lucky because we have a strong community and we have a, even a feedback section on the application. And we managed to do some analysis on these feedbacks. And then a lot of times, not all the times, a lot of users had problems with playback. So they had distorted or missing audio. For instance, if you play the video for two seconds, it's going well. And then after you move the sick bar of the video, it stops playing the audio, but the video goes on. So this was this kind of, uh, <laughs> this kind of problem. So uh, sometimes the player was unresponsive on some uh, devices, uh, uh, low end devices, because this was not only, this was not on the majority of the devices, such as the latest uh, phones, but on low end devices because of the processors, because of how the system was handling everything. Everything. So um, it was unresponsive and even buffering was a little bit of a problem because we did all well in terms of architecture and uh, all the streaming part, but the player was not handling correctly buffering. But the solution was this one. So easy, right? Two lines of code that resolved all our problems. Well, the problem is uh, in this solution we force hexo player. But the problem here that these two lines of code took months to discover because in the documentation there was there wasn't a statement that uh, said okay uh, React Native Video for default uses media player. We had to do a lot of analysis on the devices of the users. We had, we had to do a lot of test version in order to achieve these kind of results and know that the player the problem was not the um, the component but the API that the module was using. So after that, we tried to force Exo player and we tested with real users because as I said, we have a strong community and we personally uh, emailed a lot of users that were very kind to assist us with the test. It was like 100 users and we created two versions, one that had the media player, so the old version, and the other one that had Hexo player. So uh, the majority of the problems uh, disappeared because, uh, uh, because of this solution. So the player was handling correctly the playback, uh, all was right, and there was no muted audio, and even audio background started to work uh, um, well or better. Well, it's a great, uh, big word, but better, because I'll explain it later. And uh, so we did release this new version, but we released the first version in 2020. This new version with Exo Player came, uh, I think, eight months later. So it took time to discover these problems. But this problem went uh, real when users uh, began to, uh, to raise, because at the beginning we had 10,000, yes, uh, 10,000 users, so it was not so big. But when users start to scale and devices become multiple and di the diverse, here you have real problems. So this was the solution to force Exo player. Uh, we did a PR in the documentation in order to uh, avoid some uh, users' mistakes like uh, we did in 2020. But hopefully uh, this, is no, this is no more a problem because in the new version, the 6.0, this problem is fixed. So it, for default, they use Exo player. Then let's move on to the other part, audio background. So as I said, the main goal of this application was to let the users uh, um, watch the videos even in mobility, uh, during in subway, for instance, on the bus and while taking a run. And this was one of the core functionalities. So to block the phone, put it in the pocket, put your headphones on and start listening to uh, something like a podcast, like, like in a podcast way. So learn while you are doing something else. Well, audio background in Android is supported by default with React Native Video, but you don't have controls in the notification center. So this is a big problem because what if I want to advance the video, change the playback speed or do something like that? I cannot because if I lock the phone, you can I can still hear the audio, the player goes on, but I cannot control it. So this was a problem. So. We had two solutions at the time, because um, I'm speaking in uh, for 2020, 2021. And one, the solution one was to sync two players. So two modules, another module. So React Native Video with background mode audio disabled. So it means that when you lock the phone, the audio does not uh, uh, work anymore. The player is stopped. Then React Native Track Player. 
React Native uh, Track Player is a module that supports only audio files, such as MP3, for instance, or other audio files. So the idea was, what if, if we turn, uh, turn off the phone, uh, sync the players in, um, sync the players. So if I uh, have the screen opened, I use React Native Video. If I uh, turn off the screen, I use the other player. So here, as you can see here in this solution, we are using Upstate to add a listener to the, the phone when it's locked and then change the players with this method, which is switch to, that uh, switches the player in, uh, in background. It's more complex than, the, than this. I cleaned a lot of stuff in the code, but it's like this. So if the next Upstate is background or it's inactive, it means that when you lock the phone or when you go in the uh, handler of the phone to see of all the apps, you switch to the other player, so to the audio mode. When you go back to the active mode, you switch to the React Native Video player. Well, this worked, but um, it had some problems because uh, on some devices it was working well, uh, on the majority, but we have some lag while switching because you have to stop one player and to start one other player. So it means that you have half a second of lag or for delay, which is not so good for performances. But um, so we managed to switch to another solution that was uh, more uh, clean than, than this one. This was the first one adopted. This was the, uh, the quickest one to implement. Uh, the second solution uh, was to use another module, which is called uh, React Native Music Control. So uh, the idea was to use uh, React Native Video in background mode enabled. So when you lock the phone, you can still hear the, the audio and use this module, which is React Native Music Control that exposes an API to, uh, to display uh, controls in notification center. So this is only a UI library and not a player. So this is different. You expose some controls and you can sync the player uh, how, in the way you want. So for instance here, uh, in the handle upstate change, you update only the playback. So you tell the controls uh, where to position, for instance, the sync bar. So this is not a player, this are only controls and UI control. On the right, you can see uh, part of a hook that we created to use this kind of uh, controls. And for instance, when you, uh, as you can see here, music control on uh, command.play means that when the play, the, you press play on the controls in notification center, you can do whatever you want. As play is a method of our player that enables us to start the, the playback in the React Native Video module. So as play is a method of uh, uh, our method that wi that's wired to React Native Video. So, this has some positive aspects because there's no load time between switching from background to foreground. Uh, screen is not re-rendered, so it means that we, when you open the screen, the player is, is still going without uh, any, any lag or problem. And you can even handle native system events. So for instance, if you are listening to the, mu uh, to the, to the video uh, during a walk and someone calls you, the video stops. So of, if, for instance, if you have uh, your AirPods on and you took off uh, one AirPod, the video stops. So you can intercept this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of events. But the negative aspect is that obviously there's greater data consumption for our users because we're not using the MP3 as a source, but we're using the uh, HLS playlist. So uh, this is not optimal for our users. And the module at the time of speaking right now is no longer maintained. So this comes with a problem. So you or you maintain it yourself or you, or you have to develop some native solution to, to handle it. But at the time uh, I... I created this, uh, this talk and we handled this solution in 2023. There was no solution. This, this was the, uh, the only one solution that we, we could find, but hopefully we will see what's going on later. And here you can see another point of this module is that if it's no longer maintained, no one is taking care of newer version of Android. So it comes with some crashes. Well, if you have 10 users, it's okay to have some crash. At least it's not okay, but you can you can afford it. But if you, if you have a lot of users like us, it's not a good thing because we know you cannot predict the experience on, on some devices. And as you can see, uh, a lot of users had some some problems. And this is related all to native things, so to the native part of the the module. So I will show you a solution uh, later for this this kind of problem. The other thing that didn't go well, in my opinion was uh, the difference between the behavior of iOS and Android. And what do I mean by that? Well, uh, as you can see here, uh, if you uh, look in our code base, there are a lot of uh, some points that uh, differentiate the behavior between iOS and Android. On the left, platform is an API of React Native, if you have used it. 
to check which operating system has been used. The problem is not the number of occurrences of this kind of uh, if. Well, it's a problem, but it's not the real problem. The real problem is the time that took to discover that this, this difference was real, because we didn't know sometimes that, React, uh, the, that Android was behaving differently than iOS. So we had to discover a lot of things and implement this kind of workaround, because these are workarounds. So for instance here, this is the video component of React Native Video that, that exposes the on-end prop. Well, on iOS, uh, the end of the video is treated uh, differently between uh, than, uh, than Android. In the first part, for instance, if the system is Android, we change the, sta the state of the player, so of the controls to end it, we seek to zero the player, and then we, um, we pause the player, okay? We pause the player only at the end. In iOS, you have to pause the, pause the player at the beginning, and the time that took to discover this thing, this thing was uh, a lot because we, we had some problems. For instance, if the video ended, the controls were not responsive. If the video ended, the controls were flickering and we couldn't figure out what was going on. At the end, we discovered that this was this tiny thing here. But as I said, it's a small fix, but the time is uh, a huge to discover this kind, of, uh, this kind of problem. And this is related to the module. That's how the module was behaving uh, with uh, Android or iOS. For instance, even here, we have a workaround in between when we switch the from foreground to background to solve a UI problem. This is a small thing because we had to seek the player uh, forward for, uh, for a small uh, bite of time in order to re-render uh, one part of the, of the cover of the video. But this also took a lot of time to discover. I would love to remove these workarounds, but it takes time to discover them and to remove them because you have to craft some solution even in the native uh, environment if you have to maintain the module. So this was one of the differences. So as I said before, iOS was good in terms of crashes, performances, but if you look here Android, as you can see, 10% of the session of some devices are crashing. This is not very good because it means that one. Um, it means that some users use the application, watch a video, and then the other video crashes the app. So, it's ten percent of crashes. But on a large number, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of users, and so it's, this is a big problem that we are tackling and trying to resolve. And we managed to solve. And I show you how the how we did solve this kind of problem. So. This was the, uh, the part that uh, stated what didn't go well. You, you, we have seen what went well, but now I want to move on and show you what are the lessons that we've learned during our, our pattern, our development journey of this kind of uh, application. The first one is that managing dependencies and version is very hard. I know that you know that, but we started with uh, React Native uh, 0.5, if I remember right, then we are at 0.7. But the time that it takes to upgrade this kind of version is huge because we have a lot of modules to upgrade and sometimes they are not, they are not very compatible one to each other. You have to know what, which one is compatible with which. which. So this is not very easy and it took a lot of time and resources and maintaining two separate products is a very, uh, a very big task for a small team as a startup that, uh, that we are. This leads us to uh, our other point which is using many modules is in quick in short term, but you can you can, uh, can slow you down in the long term. What do I mean by that? Uh, at start, we used a lot of module. We 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 told us we told ourselves, okay, let's use this module for the video. Let's use this module for the bottom sheet. Let's use the module for for the controls. At first, it was very quick, but four years later, this module became. Uh, or not maintained or not compatible with newer version of React Native. And sometimes where they were feature that we could have developed ourselves and maintained ourselves because they were very easy, for instance, <laughs> where right now we have even, we had even in the past, a module we used to display confetti on the, when a user completed a video, for instance, we could have developed uh, ourselves, but we used the module in the past, but this module became not compatible with the last version, latest version of React Native. So, uh, in the long term, this slow out, uh, slows, uh, slowed down a little bit because we had to maintain all these kind of uh, modules. Then, one other important part, uh, point is that removing a feature is worse than not developing it in the first place. What do I mean by that? Uh, when you're a startup, you start, uh, you are very proud of what you're doing and you tell yourself, okay, let's do a lot of features. Let's give our users a lot of, uh, a lot of useful, cool stuff that no one is going to ever use. But 
for instance, for the audio background, we could have not developed in, at first the audio background in the first version because these features led us to a lot of problems while we were scaling. Because uh, um, uh, if we didn't develop this kind of feature, there wouldn't be the problem. But if we try now to remove this kind of feature, the problem is that on some devices, let's say the 70% of the devices is working well. So what happens if I remove the features to these devices? They will complain to the customer support. And how can I identify the devices in which is not working? Well, it's a difficult task. So you cannot selectively disable some devices because um, it, the, on Android, you have a range of different uh, uh, processors, devices, and operating systems. So it's easier to on iOS, but on Android, it's a completely different task. So it's difficult to remove this kind of, uh, of elements. So we could have not developed this feature in th at the first time and developed uh, it later on because this problem kept us uh, a lot of complaints from our, our user for, let's say, two years. So this is uh, uh, what we learn with this experience. And the last point is that learn once, run anywhere, more or less. <laughs> let's say that you can, uh, when you are working on something that's not close to native side, uh, in my opinion, it's okay. But when you're working on stuff like video or APIs that are tied to the system, you have to get, uh, you have to know that you have to adapt to a lot of different behaviors, like I said, even e earlier in iOS or Android. So you have to keep this in mind if you are starting to work on this kind of project. It's not always uh, the right ca use case and it's not always working out of the box. So you have to uh, roll up your sleeves and, and take all these kind of uh, difficulties. So, every good retrospective ends with action items. So, concrete points that helps us to improve our code quality, our product, and our application. So, the action items are uh, reduce the number of uh, dependencies. As I said before, there are a lot of dependencies. Reduce the number of, on, of crashes on Android because this is a uh, uh, bad behavior. So, even on the Play Store, you have the bad behavior alert on some cases. And the last uh, point is improve stability on Android. So, to the main goal is to offer a complete experience to our users and to offer a good experience, a good video playback experience, which is good, but on some devices is not. But this action item have a common solution, which is update React Native Video. This could sound easy. You take the library, you update it, and it's done. You, you, you've done it. But the problem here was that we did use the 5.2.1 version, which was, was released in 2022, but the stable version ca came two weeks ago. So the stable version uh, has out of the box uh, uh, native controls on, on the notification center, handles pretty well audio background, and you can even uh, handle the orientation using only one module. So it removes automatically all, all the external modules that we are using. But as you can see here, uh, the, the first alpha version was released in uh, April, uh, no, in December 2022, but the alpha version uh, no, was not stable, so we could not use it in production. So the first stable version came two weeks ago. So uh, the final lesson that I've learned during this experience is that um, you have to be patient, but if, you're, if you don't, do not want to be patient, you have to roll up your sleeves and do it on your own. I think that this is the only solution. Thank you. I think that we have time for some questions. No. Okay, perfect. Do you have any question? Um, we need time to troubleshooting. Yeah. Okay, well, we used a lot of tools like Flashlight to uh, inspect the, uh, the performances of the application. So Flashlight is a tool that allows you to see the frame rate of the application. But for maximum reproducibility, uh, I think that the most common solution, yes, is to handle, uh, is to use real devices. Because even if you use a simulator, they will not behave at the same way. Because we tried even some services uh, that hosted a lot of the real devices online. So for instance, you go to this website, you have a pool of devices, which are real devices. You can see the screen, but you're remote controlling them. I don't remember the exact name of the first service. I can tell you it later. But uh, so if we had to not to rely to our community, 
there are a lot of services in which you can control remotely physical devices. So this helped us a little, a little bit at first, but the community helps us uh, a lot in all these troubleshooting phase. Maybe browser lab? Yeah, that's one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, this is a common feature request because we did not uh, implement this uh, uh, topic. It's feasible because it's not so difficult to uh, make the user download the, the contents, but the main problem here is the rights. So uh, what happens if a smart user downloads the content on the phone? So you have to implement all the DRM stuff. And since we do not have a lot of uh, uh, capacity on the sprints right now because we are scaling the team, this is not our main priority. So we are tackling other problems uh, and this could be implemented if we implement DRMs because we, in my opinion, we have to implement this kind of thing because it's not a big problem if someone downloads content, but it's not good. It's a, a security leak. So I think this, the, this is the solution. Uh, in the player, I don't think, no, because you can uh, change the source because the React Native Video accepts, the, uh, for instance, an MP4 as a source. So I believe you have not to change a lot of things. You have to only implement the, the security part. I see, I see one question there. Yeah. Well, that's a nice question. Well. I think I will choose it again, but with the updated version of React Native Video. <laughs> it's not possible, no, okay. But uh, jokes aside, I think that in terms of performances, um, yes, I think uh, we did not experiment with, for instance, Flutter. Uh, but yeah, I will choose it again, I think, because uh, uh, we had, at the first, we had some developer exp development experience issues because it was not so easy on the first versions. But after uh, version uh, 68, 70, I don't remember the correct version, developer experience became better even debugging, so it was a lot easier. I do not have experience on Flutter, so I cannot comment on that, but for what I know, I would use it again, yeah. One question here. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are using Firebase Crashlytics, which is, I found it uh, very useful because it uh, allows you to see all the bugs of your application. But even if a bug is, clo a bug is closed and it repeats, it alerts you that uh, the bug is repeating in a new version. So you can monitor new versions. Uh, you can see all the stack trace of the logs. So you, f you can even custom log things. For instance, if you, something crashes, you can insert ciao here <laughs> and the, the most common uh, debug thing that I write here. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. I think that's it. So thank you very much for having me and see you around. <laughs>